All right, I got, got every, okay, I got, there, got, got all the reports here, go, okay, pencils down, pencils down, pens down, everything down, of course, your reports are done, it is done, now, uh, this is, of course, Russell Cram University, and I am your humble professor, Professor D. Nostranovis, a.k.a. Derek, and if you don't know anything about what's going on today, this is what I learned from this weekend, if you're watching this today, you're watching it tomorrow, you're watching it next week, I truly do thank you from the bottom of my heart to the depths, the depths of my lungs. I truly do thank you. Without you guys, without you guys, it truly wouldn't be me. I'm humbled I each and every single time I'm allowed to do this. Thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you so much for allowing your boy, D. Nostradamus, for doing the show. If you don't know anything about what I learned from last week or this weekend, of course, this is the new, this is the special edition. Um, what I learned, uh, of course, WrestleMania was uh, last weekend, so we are going to do specifics of what not, what happened on uh, the weekend of WrestleMania. I thank y'all so much for watching the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Or not. I know I've been in and out, you know, for, you know, a couple of weeks, probably a month or whatnot. But I am trying to come back uh, very, very slowly and, and sporadically about that. Um, so, um, and it is really nasty out here in uh, North Louisiana. It is real. It's been thunderstorms pretty much for the last couple of days. So if you hear some rumblings or whatnot, that's probably thunder and lightning or whatnot. That's, I guarantee that's what it is. Unfor uh, I would say thank you. Uh, the, the internet has not went down. Thank you, Verizon, uh, for not doing that or not going out. How about that? That's a great thing. Um, but, you know, we, we're having a great time here. We're going to have a great time here today or oh, whatnot. Of course, once again, we're going to talk about uh, uh, what happened on the weekend. So what your learns are specifically are about what happened this weekend or last weekend, if you want to say that. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You guys, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well. Uh, I'm on the TikToks. I, I think I'm still on the TikToks. I don't know. <laughs> I'm on, um, yeah, I'm, I'm on, uh, of course, Twitter or the X. And also, I'm on a Facebook. I do have my own Facebook group club. It's called Wrestle Cram Super Club. So don't forget to check me out over there on the Wrestle Cram Super Club as well. I'm posting on both of those sites uh, religiously. So um, you can always shoot a uh, shout out, uh, hey out to me or whatnot. I don't mind. And we have a great time over there on both of those uh, sites. Um, not a lot of TikTok stuff because I, I don't know what's going on. It won't allow me. It, it's just it's it's just the weirdest. I don't know. So I, I'm on TikTok, you know. To say to me, but anyway, without further ado, without further ado, let's get into the learns. That's what you're here for. You're here for the learns and whatnot. So let's get into it. The very first one is going to be from Mr. Greenhead. How are we doing, up, Mr. Greenhead? Uh, what I learned. WrestleMania weekend is that NXT adding the women's North American belt is good. No, great for NXT. And the WWE. How about this? I will give this a solid A. A plus plus plus. Because, trust me, I think that the North American title should have a female version of it. Um, matter of fact, I think the Intercontinental title should have a female version. And the United States title should have a female version of all of those or whatnot. We should have uh, more built uh, on the uh, on the women's side so we can have more competition for for not just the you know the tag titles that the women's have and the uh, the only world title or the only singles title. So I truly think that I will give my props to AEW because AEW started it first and I will respect that for them doing the uh, television women's title over there. Uh, I forgot the young lady who uh, has that title. Uh, in the comments, let me know what that young lady's name. I think she won at uh, this weekend as well on uh, Dishonored. That dis or the Supercard, I'm sorry, Supercard of Honor. Uh, so congratulations to her as well. So I am happy that we are getting this, um, especially in NXT, especially now since NXT will be going uh, to the CW, and we need a lot of flair, a lot of niceness, a lot of a lot of greatness over there. And I think that uh, with adding another belt to uh, that uh, uh, brand will help not only. Uh, NXT, but I think it will put more eyeballs on the product as well. So I do uh, uh, 
I do think this is a great uh, uh, step for uh, NXT and the WWE. I do, uh, and I think uh, uh, them for probably looking at uh, AEW and saying, "Hey, uh, more women titles are better or best for business." About that, so a uh, solid A plus plus uh, for that. Thank you so much for your report, Mister Greenhead. The next report is going to be uh, from uh, Pomegranate Juice ninety six. How we doing, Pomegranate Juice? Uh, what I learned from last week is that the storylines matter, and AEW has a long way to become a really good wrestling show. The product in AEW, well, first let me say that this is going to be another A, because I do agree with you 100%. First and foremost, let me say this, and I continuously will say this. I am an AEW fan. I'm a Tony Khan fan. I do enjoy the product somewhat. I will say that. Now, uh, what the story... Now, here's the thing about Tony Khan. Uh, I will say this, and a lot of people agree with me. I mean, there are some diehard AEW fans that says that AEW can do no wrong. And I'm going to tell you that that is absolutely false. Even the WWE, in all of its glory as of right now, has its faults. All wrestling organizations have their faults. And with AEW... Unfortunately, I will say this. It is the booking. The booking is really, really bad. Um, I mean, I don't know if uh, Tony Khan is, is, just has this power hungriness and saying, hey, I am the civil back gorilla and y'all have to do what I got to do. I mean, what I say, yes, of course. You're the, you're the billionaire. You're the person who owns the AEW rights and everything else that is AEW. So I understand that. But here's the thing, uh, the, in order to be a great leader, you have to have something called humility. You have to have humbleness. You have to humble yourself. And I truly think that Tony Khan has not reached that purpose of being humble yet. And, 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 so, and, and if you look at the numbers, if you look at the ratings and, and everything else that is happening in AEW, you will understand why I'm saying this. Uh, their their uh, ratings are not going higher. They're actually going lower. They're go they're losing about ten to fifteen thousand viewers a week now, especially on their flagship show Dynamite. So it's truly getting to a point where it's like, are you sure that you your booking is good? It's not. Yes, you are a beast at making fantasy or or a one or these. A great matches. Yes, anybody can do that. I can do that. I can put up a, a great uh, fantasy matches all day. I mean, that's kind of an easy thing to do. But booking from week to week is something that a lot of people can't do. And unfortunately, I will say this about Tony Khan, and I love Tony Khan. I think Tony Khan is a great person. But he is not a good booker. He's not a great booker. He needs to get somebody in there that can book on a religious basis. It's just the truth. Um, wrestling is centered around storylines. I mean, I look, I know that you want to have an alternative for your product. I understand that. Completely understand that. But the alternative should not be sacrificed by lack of storylines. And I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna stop right there because I can honestly talk about this all day. I can honestly talk about this all day. So I'm not gonna continue to do this. But a plus 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 uh, to you as well, Pomegranate Juice ninety six. And uh, thank you so much for that report. Uh, the next report is gonna be from the Mitch Does It. How we doing, the Mitch Does It? Uh, what I learned this week, WrestleMania weekend, is that although WrestleMania forty uh, redeems itself because uh, of night two. I think I still think WrestleMania 38 and 39 were still way better shows. I am happy Cody won the WWE title, though. So uh, so good job on WWE making that right call there. Um, I'm gonna give this a a, a B. Um, I will say WrestleMania 38 was good, was better. I think I think 38 was is 38. Let me ask you this. I'm going to put this in, in the comments. Um, was WrestleMania 38 the one with the Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair and, of course, Kofi Kingston versus uh, uh, Daniel Bryan? 
Was that the one? I, if that's the one, then yeah, 38 was way better or whatnot. And on top of that, I will say the WrestleMania where Brian Danielson had to face uh, Randy Orton and, uh, uh, and Batista. That one was really good as well. Those are really good. So I'm I'm, I'm kind of gonna agree with you on on those because uh, I this one night one the only one that I the only match that I truly liked on night one uh, was probably the the tag match. I mean that's the only one I can possibly think of. Was there anything? I mean, was night one Sammy versus uh, Gunther? I thought that was a pretty decent match as well. Um, but, yeah, Night 2, I think, held its own when it came to the uh, uh, the matches um, and, and the storyline. So, I agree with you um, that there are some better WrestleMania matches. Um, and, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, if, if, if 38 is the one with Kofi Kingston, Ronda Rousey, uh, and uh, the uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte, then, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yes, I agree with you on that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm i going to, if I said a B, I'm going to go with an A, because if it wasn't for night two, uh, WrestleMania 40 would be mm, in an okay WrestleMania. You'll be in the okay uh, group. And, of course, yes, they did do a right by Cody Rhodes by pulling the trigger and taking the title off of the Tribal Chief. Yes, I most definitely agree with that. I can't wait to see uh, what Cody has to say on Friday Night SmackDown, since he now is the champion of Friday Night SmackDown. How about that? So, but I do thank you for that report. Uh, Mitch does it. Thank you so much for that report. The next report is going to be from Larry Gear One. How are we doing, Larry Gear One? Uh, what I learned is that Judgment Day is going to be the next really big faction now that Damian Priest is the new world champion. I looked at Raw and it was a disaster. I, uh, I'm going to give this a C. I have to watch and see what happens with this. Uh, Damian Priest has been truly a joke for a while now since he has since he won the uh, Money in the Bank. Um, now the the what happened at WrestleMania I thought was really good. Was it on the level of Seth Rollins uh, cashing in on Brock Lesnar and, and and Roman Reigns? No, not even close. But I did like the situation where, of course, uh, 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 Drew did win. Uh, against Seth Rollins and the situation where uh, CM Punk was like, yo, you took me out, so I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take the title off you as well. So this storyline is going to be really good. Uh, it's going to get a, it's going to separate, I'm sorry, it's going to separate um, a Damian Priest from all of the A players or whatnot to me on the Raw side. Uh, CM Punk now has beat Beef, still beef with, of course, Drew McIntyre, which is going to separate them from that situation. The only person I think that should uh, uh, still have a, a match uh, with Damian Priest would probably be um, Seth Rollins, which would be, I think, a really fun match. It would be a really fun match. So I would like to see a, a match between Damian Priest and Seth Rollins. That would be a very fun match. But it will navigate Drew from that uh, title scene for just a little bit, just for a little bit. And, and I enjoy it. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to give it a C right now because they are still joke players after what happened on Monday Night Raw. It's still a joke or whatnot. I, I, it's, it's a headache. But, yeah, I'll give it a C right now. Thank you so much for that report, though, uh, uh, Larry Gear One. Uh, the next report is uh, going to be from uh, the Southern Bell. How are we doing, Southern Bell 1980? Uh, what I learned uh, from uh, last weekend is that Trick and Melo and Braun are the future of the WWE. Stand and Deliver was really good. Uh, Stand and Deliver was not only really good, I think Stand and Deliver was probably better than Night One, hands down. I truly think that the main event between uh, Trick and Mello was uh, probably one of the best matches uh, on Night One. Even the tag match between... Uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins versus The Rock and Roman Reigns. I tell you that. It was just that good. Uh, Trick is one of those generational talents. He needs to stay in the WWE to get his, uh, to just make him a, a household name. Carmelo is just so good on in the ring. He still needs to work on his mic skills. That needs to happen. But 
he, when I tell you that he is so good in the ring, it makes no sense. And of course, you have Braun Breaker, who is pretty much the fusion of Mello and Trick all together. I mean, these three individuals may have a match at WrestleMania between the, the, the undisputed heavyweight champion, just those three, just a triple threat match, and of course, probably Brun would win. But I, I, this is just the NXT is is so good now. It may, you, you gotta give a shout out to Shawn Michaels and what he's doing over there. It is just really, really good. Uh, that entire card of it. I mean, the entire card was good. In court, and of course, the announcement of the uh, women's uh, United uh, North American title. Uh, it's just, it's just, it stands out. It truly stands out. Stand and Deliver is truly one of the cornerstones of WrestleMania weekend. And Trick, Mello, and Braun truly are breakout stars. They are just that damn good. Uh, A++++ plus 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 on this report as well. Thank you so much for that report. Southern Bell. The next report, the next report is going to be from Handlebar Mustache. How we doing, Handlebar Mustache? What I learned from this weekend is that CM Punk and Drew McIntyre is going to be a fire storyline with Seth somewhat in there as well. I'm going to give this an A++++ as well. Goodness gracious, we just talked about it. I truly think that CM Punk did a phenomenal job on commentary at a WrestleMania Night 2. Also, he did a great job uh, uh, just being upset because he is injured. He could not be at, at WrestleMania or whatnot. And him him just giving it, giving it uh, the middle finger to Drew McIntyre, him winning it and then just losing it right after. So, uh, I mean, this is going to be a phenomenal phenomenal storyline great angle please drew i know that you have not signed with the wwe as of right now but i need you to resign i need you to resign i really need you to resign right now because i truly think this is money money yeah yeah i got money money yeah yeah this is money this is truly truly money you guys i, I tell anybody this this is truly money but I do thank you, A++++ Handlebar Mustache, for that report. The next report is going to be from Night... Uh, I'm sorry. The next report is going to be from Nightingale Armor. Nightingale Armor. How are we doing, Nightingale Armor? What I learned this weekend is that The Rock still has it and really enjoyed being, being in a tag team uh, at the main event at... Night one was really, really good. I'm going to give this a B because, once again, I just said that the Trick and Mellow uh, match is better than all of the matches on night one. Uh, I will say that. But I will say that The Rock looks, he still looks good, but, you know, he's old. It looked okay. Um, I liked, uh, you know, even the choke slam from The Undertaker was like, mm, you know, so, uh, look, they're getting older. They can't go into the ring like they want to and do 30-minute matches like they should. Uh, it was okay. It was okay. But, you know, um, does he still have it? If you look at the old stuff, <laughs> matter of fact, if you look at the WrestleMania um, match uh, between him and Hogan, are you sure? Matter of fact, even if you look at the match between him and John Cena, I would say the very first one, which was really good. The first one was really good. The second one was okay, but the first one was really good. So, uh, you look at that match. Are you sure? Think, think about it. Look at those two matches again. And see, or not. And that's why they did a, you know, uh, they did this. Now, uh, now one of the matches will be uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson versus uh, Cody Rhodes. Probably at SummerSlam. So I would love to see that and see how he does in a one-on-one -on -one match. So we're going to hold our judgment. I'm going to hold my judgment, of course, until I see a one-on-one -on -one match between, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, I guarantee his next match will be against Cody Rhodes for that title at SummerSlam. I guarantee that's what's going to happen. So, uh, but I, I give it a B, solid B, B plus on that. Thank you so much for that report. Thank you so much for that report, Nightingale Lover. The very last one, the very last report is going to be from Dragon Hunter XD. How are we doing, a Dragon Hunter XD? What I learned from this weekend is that Jay Cargill needs the WWE more than the other way around. What a great 
collaboration between the two. Oh, goodness. Yes, I will agree with you 120% behind that. Yes, yes, Jay Cargill most definitely needs the WWE. It's not the other way around. I truly think uh, if you have been listening to uh, uh, Jim Carnett, Jim Carnett has praised both Jay Cargill and the WWE on what they're doing. The strengths of Jay Cargill is in the ring. It is not on her mic skills. Now, I do love her mic skills. She did a great job with the situation where she was. Uh, she signed the contract in, which made her a baby face, baby face, baby face. And, of course, she just did a couple of words. You know, she did about damn time, and, you know, she thanked everybody and whatnot uh, for her awesomeness. Now, I will say this. Her intro is great. If you have not seen her intro, go see her intro. Her intro is so good. It makes no sense. Uh, uh, it's just so good. And what she did in uh, WrestleMania was really, really fun. This was a triple threat match. Well, not a triple threat match. It was a three-on-three -three match. And it was the Jade Cargill show. It was the, what can Jade Cargill do? And she did a great job, I promise you. I mean, a phenomenal match. Fun match. Um, on, I think it was night one, they, they uh, faced each other. And I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. Uh, hands down. Really, 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 really good. So, yes, I most definitely agree that the, the extra training that they did with Jade Cargill and, of course, uh, the Mike skills, uh, that, that's going to that's gonna happen. That's going to happen. And I do see that she will be uh, the universal. Well, now, since Bailey won, I don't know how that's going to work now. Uh, so, We'll see what happens with that. Um, and uh, once again, uh, I give it a solid A on that. A solid A. Uh, thank you so much for that report. Thank you so much for that report. Now, are you ready for my report? Are you ready for my report? My report is going to be very simple, very easy this go around. Um, this was a really, really fun, really, really fun uh, weekend. Really, really fun weekend. Uh, I myself, I didn't do a lot. I was at work on both nights. Um, and, you know, I'm just going through. I wouldn't say I'm going through a lot. It's just, um, you know, ups and downs, left and right, uh, schooling and all this other stuff as well. So, um, but I will say that this weekend was really fun. I, when I did look at the snippets, I looked at the snippets. But I did watch both nights uh, on my off day, which was Monday. Uh, and when I tell you it was really fun, um, I mean, what more can I say about the WWE, uh, AEW, uh, New Japan, um, Impact, or in uh, TNA, or e even the NWA? I think, uh, uh, once again, I will say this again, and I will truly say this again. I truly think, without a doubt, I truly think that the golden age is here. The golden age of wrestling is upon us. And I truly think, uh, without a doubt, I truly think that uh, without WrestleMania 40 being the success that it had had, had happened, I truly think that we would not have this huge storm of now people coming back into wrestling, people coming back to watch wrestling, and people starting to enjoy wrestling yet again. Even though we have the trials and tribulations of everything else we have when it comes to the drama with, between the stuff that's happening uh, behind and the dirt sheets and all this stuff, once again, the product is still above it all. And I truly think that with this situation we have, with everything else, the golden age is here. As a matter of fact, I truly think that we're going to have another uh, uh, era. I think the PG era is coming to an end. We're having a new era. And I think that that's going to uh, propel everything else as well. So I truly think uh, that uh, the golden age is here. I'm going to continue to say that because wrestling is now back to what it needs to be. And I think Cody Rhodes is uh, the, the pinnacle, the, the, the truly the catalyst behind a lot of this. Uh, so, uh, hands down, hands down, much love to everybody uh, that, that, that does wrestling the, or in, in wrestling, the productions in wrestling, um, the, 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 the people like me, the, the people who, who are in uh, podcasting and recording things like this. I, I think everybody, wanted, even the old school people like uh, uh, um, uh, Jim Cornette, who I really, really respect and love, um, and, you know, uh, even, you know, the other people. Or not. I'm not going to call them names, but, you know, uh, I, I, like, I just like Jim Cornette more than all. But I, I will say that um, there's a lot of, of awesomeness, and uh, I truly think that uh, it has arrived. It has arrived. 
So, uh, what do you think about my report? What do you think about the other reports or whatnot? Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, you guys. I'm on the TikTok. I'm on Twitter or X. I do have my own Facebook group club. It is called WrestleCram Super Club. So, go check me out on all of those platforms as well. Um, what more can I say? Uh, um, I'm not going to have a show Wednesday because I need to do the cuts or whatnot. So, I will have it on Thursday, the gripe show for uh, the weekend as well. That is going to be for Wednesday. So you have one more day to get your gripes in for uh, the gripe show. Also, when, uh, Saturday, you will get the Axe Wrestle Cram show. Uh, that is going to be for uh, everything that happened for the weekend and this week as well. So you have plenty of time to get those in uh, as well. I can't wait to get those questions, uh, those answers for your questions for Axe Wrestle Cram. I do thank y'all so much. I love y'all so much. Uh, pencils back up, pens back up, get your reports in, it is in, it is out right now for you guys for next Saturday, I mean Sunday, to get your, uh, your alerts in, okay? The best is truly yet to come, the best is truly yet to come! Until next time, love, peace, and of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, wrestling.